What's up, everybody? Let's Talk Jets Radio. Hope you guys are doing well, enjoying your Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Uh, quick video here, just uh, you know, touching on some stuff from Rookie Minicamp. First off, Zach Wilson. I love all the vibes coming off of him, believe it or not. You know, I, I know everybody knows that I was very much against that pick. Uh, but now that he's here, you know, I, I think everybody's embracing it, whether you were Darnold or Fields or whoever. Um, you know, so I do like the fact that it seems like he's taking on the leadership role. Uh, he's doing his best to connect with teammates. He's a film junkie. You know, he's trying to study up the film, learn the playbook, you know, get on the same page with everybody. So everything that you want from a young quarterback coming in, you know, it seems like he's showing you all those things right now, which is good. Even more so, you really trust the pieces that are around him between the floor and Sala, you know, just to kind of finally coach him upright, much different than what you had with Darnold, even as far as, you know, the talent goes, the offensive line, the weapons, the receivers, uh, completely night and day. And the biggest thing I think is Sala, you know, I think that's why a lot of fans right now, it, it's so easy to buy in because you have a head coach that you could actually believe in, a head coach that you actually like, a head coach that should be a motivator, um, a head coach that I think the players are going to want to play for. So you have all those things, and with Gase, you know, I, I think four weeks into the Adam Gase era, you know, when, when Darnold went down with Mono, and he proved that he couldn't make any adjustments with a backup quarterback, and he essentially threw those games away, um, you know, I think that was kind of where fans were like, yeah, this is exactly what all the Miami Dolphins fans warned us about, that this is what was going to happen. And so I, I think a lot of us just kind of fell into that lull where it was like, well, we got nothing to look forward to for at least another year, if not, you know, a year and a half, maybe two years. And I think that's why, you know, it, it was so hard to just be a, a positive, optimistic, uh, trust the process type of fan, which is usually what I am. You know, I, I usually enjoy uh, just kind of sitting back and letting the GMs do their thing. I'm usually not a guy that's, you know, screaming to fire people all the time. But just the, the Adam Gase era, I, I think it broke even the most patient of fans that are out there because we knew that there was no hope. We, we knew that he was not turning things around. We knew that he was going to destroy Sam Darnold, which he ultimately did. And that was kind of why they had to move on from him, or at least why they were in position to, you know, take a, a guy second overall. So, you know, it is what it is. But now that you have the head coach uh, that is in-house, that the players like, he's filled with energy, um, it, it really makes it a lot easier just to kind of sit back and not be negative all the time, not, you know, come out with all these takes of, you know, firing this guy. Why is Joe Douglas doing this? You know, the, the last draft was the first time uh, that Joe Douglas has been here that I felt like, all right, he really, truly put his stamp on the team. His quarterback, more weapons, his top six picks of the first two drafts are all offense. So I love that. He's prioritizing the quarterback. So I really feel like Douglas is finally starting to put a stamp on this team now that he has his coach, now that he has his quarterback. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but once again, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Hope you guys are doing well and talk to you tomorrow night. We'll be live uh, at 830, I believe. So have a good day.